Well, I think the U.S. has um, had a very successful recovery. But while this has gone on, two factors have really uh, compromised the impact on the global economy. One of them is the slowdown in China. Now, when we talk about a slowdown, uh, Europe and the U.S. would just be delighted to have growth rates that China is currently enjoying. But compared to the rapid growth of the previous years, it's had a major impact on demand uh, for particularly commodities in places like Australia. Um, oil prices have really declined and this is having a very differential negative impact. So within the U.S., for example, uh, places like Houston are really experiencing very, very sharp decline in activity. The rest of the country is enjoying the fact that oil prices are very low. So as we look at the global economy, I think it's becoming very, very difficult to really trace the full impacts of changes in one country on the rest of the world because so many things are changing at the same time. So I think we're probably thinking very cautiously about the next three to five years in large part that uh, we don't know the degree to which the Chinese economy is going to recover, whether market liberalization in China will continue, uh, whether the price adjustments for the renminbi are going to continue to be allowed, and if so, that will create, I think, uh, quite some considerable uncertainty. And what is happening in Europe, I think, is being very heavily compromised by the uh, immigration uh, problems, which are potentially going to drain a lot of resources as uh, money has to be spent, one million people to be resettled in Germany. That's going to come at some cost. Where is that money going to come from? What sort of impact will that have in the long run? So I think basically as you look around the world, I think the, um, uh, nothing is moving in the same direction. You have countries that are moving in one direction and the other. And what's happening in Russia uh, is a further complication, which is not going to be helped by the rapid decrease in, in oil prices. So I think it's going to be a very foolish person who would make some forecasts for the global economy over the next three years. And I am not such a person. Um, well, I think we're, we're moving from the, the period of, of entertainment now into getting very serious. And the question becomes, um, who is going to be the likely candidate for the Republican Party? And I think a week ago, most people were very, very worried that Donald Trump might be that person. I think uh, after what happened in Iowa, perhaps reality is settling in with some voters who are in the Republican Party. But it's very unclear whether uh, either Rubio or Cruz will emerge as the leader. And I think a lot of people are very concerned about them. Uh, particularly, uh, they have been very um, inconsistent in terms of uh, their policies. Uh, people are very concerned that uh, Trump has pulled them very far to the right. And uh, particularly on issues like immigration, uh, it is not clear uh, what their policies are going to be on the health care issue. Um, so there's enormous uncertainty about uh, what the eventual candidate will have in the way of a portfolio. It's less critical, I think, in terms of who that person is, but much more the platform. On the Democratic side, I think uh, Sanders will pull Hillary Clinton to the left, but I don't think very many people think that he will be the eventual candidate. So we're looking at an election probably between Hillary Clinton and Rubio or Cruz. And uh, this is going to be very interesting because a lot of women will be very excited to have the opportunity to vote for a female candidate, but on the Republican side, they don't like her at all. So the question is, will she be able to attract enough Republican voters to come over uh, to support the Democrats, who I think will vote for Clinton, even though a lot of people uh, perhaps find her a little too conservative? The option of voting for a Republican candidate is not up. So uh, the question then is, probably the 15 or 20 percent of people who shift their allegiance, uh, at the moment it's unclear. Uh, I th I'd say if the election was held next week, Hillary Clinton would probably win, 
but over the next uh, nine months, a lot of things can change. Uh, what happens in the economy, what happens to the, the, the global economy, uh, what happens to the final platform that the Republican Party uh, leads. So I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, election, and I think we're now getting to the point where people are becoming serious, and I think the flamboyance and the uh, rhetoric of people like Trump are going to diminish in importance. At least I hope that's the case, because uh, the prospect of having Trump as a president is not a very encouraging one. And as a result of that, I would probably move to Spain.